Continuing in our chapter on sequences in series, we're going to talk about geometric sequences today. Um, so our last lesson, we talked about arithmetic sequences and how, like, with arithmetic, all you have to do is add and subtract. We talked about a common difference. Uh, geometric sequences are kind of like um, arithmetic sequences part two. You're not doing any geometry. Instead of adding and subtracting, we're going to be multiplying. So our question is, what makes a sequence geometric? We're going to define and identify geometric sequences and then apply those to some problems. So for your vocabulary, a geometric sequence with a starting value A and a common ratio is a sequence that's of the form A, A times R, A times R squared, A times R cubed, and then it continues. So you're taking um, and multiplying it and raising that ratio to a power. So here's your recursive formula. Recursive formula for these is the same. Uh, so as your explicit formula, uh, you're going to want to know that um, explicit formula to for finding you know, a certain number term. And then the geometric mean of two positive numbers, x and y, is x times y, and then the square root of that. Uh, why can we not have a positive and a negative number? Well, for obvious reasons, then we get a ration or imaginary numbers because we have negative under square roots, and so we can't do that. Um, so geometric means are with um, positive numbers. So identifying a geometric sequence is a sequence geometric if that's what I'll say if it is. What are a one, our first value, and r, our common ratio? So here's our sequence: three, six, twelve, twenty-four, forty-eight. Now, in order for it to be a geometric ratio, um, or a geometric sequence, we have to have a ratio. And to find the ratio, um, remember when we did arithmetic sequences, when we had common difference, we subtracted term 2 from term 1, and term 3 from, or term 1 from term 2, term 2 from two, term 3. Anyway, I can't speak. So uh, for these, if we're doing ratios, we're going to be dividing. So we're going to divide term 2 divided by term 1, term 3 divided by term 2, term 4 divided by term 3, and so on and so forth, and see if they're all equal. So 6 divided by 3 is 2, 12 divided by 6 is 2, 24 divided by 12 is 2, 48 divided by 24 is 2. They're all the same. We have a common ratio of 2, which is our R value, and then A sub 1 is just our first value, which is 3. So you can find any um, number in this sequence, and you can continue the pattern, 48 times 2, times 2, times 2, times 2. Okay, what about this one? 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. Okay, well, in order to determine if it's a geometric sequence, we have to do um, the ratio. So we need to take 6 divided by 3 and see if that's equal to 9 divided by 6. Is that equal to 12 divided by 9? Is that equal to 15 divided by 12? Uh, this one's 2. This one's 3 halves. So those aren't equal. This one is 4 thirds. That's not equal. And this one is 5 fourths. Not equal. So this is not geometric, but did you notice that our sequence, what's our pattern? We add 3 each time. So add 3, add 3, add 3. What is this? This is an arithmetic sequence. All right. Uh, what are the indicated terms of the geometric sequence? We're going to find the tenth term of the sequence, 4, 12, 36. Okay, so we're going to take that formula. So to find a sub n, that means any term of the sequence, we take a sub 1, our first term, times our common ratio raised to the power of whatever that term is, minus 1. Um, so our a sub 1 is 4. What's our ratio? What's happening from 1 to the next? Well, 12 divided by 4 is 3. 36 divided by 12 is 3. So our ratio is 3, and then we're going to take that to the 10 minus 1 power. Um, so then that's 3 to the ninth. so take 3 to the ninth times 4. Put in your calculator, you get 78,732. So that's pretty simple. All right, now if we have um, missing terms in our sequence, we can also find those. So if we wanted to find these two missing terms in our sequence, uh, it starts with 2 and ends with 54. We can use um, this information to find what our R is. So if we take um, a sub 4 is 2, our first term, um, times our rate raised to the 4 minus 1 power, because we know what our fourth term is. Go ahead and plug in that fourth term, and then we can solve that. So we want to take um, divide by 2, divide by 2, 
Um, and negative 54 divided by 2 is negative 27 equals r cubed. To find r, we take the cubed root of both sides. What number times itself 3 times makes negative 27? Or r value is negative 3. So if we know our ratio is negative 3, we take 2 times negative 3. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. And then we take negative 6 times negative 3, and we get positive 18. If we were to multiply 18 um, by negative 3, do we get negative 54? Yes, we do. Perfecta mundo. All right. Um, in physics, when a ball bounces, the heights of consecutive bounces form a geometric sequence. What are the heights of the fourth and fifth bounces? So if you look at this, we have bounce 1, that's 100 centimeters, and we have bounce 3, which is 49 centimeters. So in order to find out what the fourth and fifth terms are, we need to find our r, because we have 1 and 3, so we need to find 2, uh, or what the rate is, to get 2 there, and then apply that to the fourth and fifth. So we're going to do the same thing. A1 is 100, A3 is 46. Plug that into our formula. Um, if we solve for r, you get 7 over 10. Um, because we take divide by 100, take the square root of that, square root of 49 is 7, square root of 100 is 10. Okay, so we know our r is 7 tenths. So going from 3, we can take 3, which is 49, and multiply that by 7 tenths. And you get, um, I just put it as a decimal, 34.3 centimeters. Then to find the fifth term, you take that and multiply that times 7 tenths, because it's decreasing each time. And that's 24 centimeters. And last but not least, the geometric mean. Uh, remember to find geometric mean, we take x and y, multiply them together, and take the square root of that. So what's the geometric mean between the numbers 48 and 3? Well, um, oh, it's a multiple choice even. Uh, so we take 48 times 3, that's 144. The square root of 144 is 12, so the correct answer is C. Positive or negative 12 would both fit in there. Um, because we divide by positive or negative 4. Well, multiply. We're multiplying by negative 1 fourth. Positive 1 fourth, negative 1 fourth. Divide by 4. Same thing. All right, here's your lesson check. I want you to do these two questions. Discuss them with your partner when you're done with the video. See if you guys have any questions. Um, I'll also be available. And don't forget to do your homework. Have a great weekend.